to keep it unto that day, the day when he shall return in his glory with his holy angels. Praise the Lord. As we anticipate the second coming of the Lord, let us continue to trust. Let us continue to be persuaded that God is able. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I want to welcome David to the podium now, and he has entitled the sermon, There is a God in heaven who... Let's finish that. <laughs> Thank you, David. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Can I just open in prayer again? Let's bow our heads. Father of God, I pray that you will really help this sermon, Father, to, to touch the hearer today and, and guide my words, Father. May they be the words that, that you want, Father to be spoken. Please bless everything that is said today. Bless the hearer too. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like you to open your Bibles to Daniel 2, please. I haven't put the scriptures in Daniel 2 on the PowerPoint today. So if you could have your Bible open, that would be, that would be wonderful. Daniel chapter 2 is a really interesting chapter of the Bible and I'm only going to do part one of this sermon today. And, but I want to just start by reading verse 28a because it's the theme song of this sermon. There is a theme song, do you know, to this sermon. And it's 28 verse a and that theme song is but there is a God in heaven who revealeth secrets. There is a God in heaven who revealeth secrets. We're not going to get that far in Daniel 2 today, but it is the theme song, as you'll find out. But let's go back to verse 1 of chapter 2. And it says, Now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and the, his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the command to call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I have had a dream, and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. Can you hear how troubled the king was? His, he was anxious because of not just one dream, but it was the same dream. Because it said there in verse 1, he had had dreams. But, but then we, we know that it was only one dream. And the dream kept coming back to the king. Have you ever had dreams like that? Is anybody having dreams at the moment that are troubling you? That you're anxious about? There is a God in heaven. If you are having any anxiety because of any dreams, if you are having any anxiety because of anything else, there is a God in heaven. Amen. Be comforted that there is a God in heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar didn't say, as Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. He said, I have had a dream. And this dream was troubling him. And we're going to, to read on. In, that, in chapter 2, he called the astrologers, he called the magicians, he called the sorcerers, he called the Chaldeans. And, and I was looking up the word Chaldeans because we, I think we understand Chaldeans as, as really meaning the people of Babylon. But there was also a, a more specific meaning for Chaldeans. They were um, linked to the, the idea of being astrologers. And, and so... King Nebuchadnezzar, when he was in anxiety, when he was troubled and lost his sleep, who did he call? The magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans. Who are we going to call when we have troubles in our life? God of heaven. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven to call. And he cares. Don't call the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, or the... Sorcerers, because what does the Bible say about that? So many things the Bible says about that. We, we see, for example, um, 
in, in, in the following verses about the magicians, the astrologers, we see in Exodus 22, verse 18. Do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out. And so make yourselves unclean by them. I am, I am the Lord your God. Call on me. Says God. Says God. And it says in Leviticus 20, 27, a man or woman who, who is a medium or a necromancer shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. This is a, a something that God detests. Don't call astrologers or sorcerers. And then Revelation 21.8, it says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, and more and more others are mentioned, murderers, the sexually immoral, and who else is mentioned? Sorcerers. And all liars, their portion shall be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Don't call sorcerers. Serious warnings here. And this is just a small sample. Galatians 5, 19 to 21 says, Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, and then what gets mentioned again? Sorcery. Sorcery. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Acts 19, 19, And a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burn them in the sight of all because they were touched by the Holy Spirit and they knew that this was not pleasing to God. Magic. A <clears throat> couple more verses. There's so many speaking against magic and sorcery and witchery and astrology. Here's one in Deuteronomy 18.10. There shall not be found among you anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens, or a sorcerer. Finally, one about astrology. Exactly, it says in Isaiah 47, 13 to 14. You are wearied with your many counsels. Let them stand forth and let them stand forth and save you. Those who divide the heavens, who gaze at the stars. Who's that? Who gazes at the stars? To guide you, it's astrologers. Who at the new moons make known what shall come upon you. Behold, they are like stubble. The fire consumes them. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. Brothers and sisters, do you see in the world what's happening? Do you see in the world how there's been such a, an increase in recent years and, and through our lifetimes of, of people getting involved in, in magic and, and witchery and it, sorcery, it, it's growing and it's, it's, it's from the devil, it's darkness. And we see that the people are, who have lost the, the um, connection with, with, with God and, and, and the righteous way of seeking after God for help are going after magic, mediums. And this is not pleasing to God. There is a God in heaven to go to. Amen. A God of light and wisdom and righteousness and love who cares for us. Don't go to the magicians, etc. Verses 4 to 6 now, as we get back to Daniel 2. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give the interpretation. <laughs> Tell us the dream, please, king. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, My decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be an ash heap, or the King James said, dunghill. However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts rewards and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. The seemingly impossible challenge. How on earth would any of us know what you dreamed last night? I don't know what even my wife dreamed last night unless she tells me the seemingly impossible challenge. 
Do you have a seemingly impossible challenge in your life right now? There is a God in heaven who you can go to. I, I, I loved how, how in sharing time today, Mahora shared something that was a seemingly impossible challenge to her and she went to the God of heaven and she got through it. That sickness, that, that COVID-19, which, which paralyzed her in, in, in many ways. It was difficult. It was like an impossibility, an impossible challenge. But she went to the God of heaven and she got through. Amen. I remember one day, Angela and I and a couple of friends of, of our Scott and Cheryl, we were walking around some rocks near the ocean, just past Whakatani. And Cheryl got to a point where she just couldn't go any further. She was scared about the next step. How do I get around without falling in the water? And I don't think she can swim, is that right? She can't swim. How do I get around? And she was free, frozen and panicking. It was a seemingly impossible challenge. And I prayed. I prayed for her. And it was like instantly, immediately, somehow her feet and hands knew exactly where to go and she got straight through that seemingly impossible challenge. Praise God, there is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. And He is a mighty God. He created the heavens and the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. There is a mighty God in heaven. Don't doubt that God can do anything. If He can make the earth, create the earth and the heavens and everything in six days, He can help us. There is a God in heaven. And there is a God in heaven who cares, who hasn't left us alone. A God in heaven, as we would expect a creator to do, who would communicate with us in a clear way, who's given us the Word of God so that we know what He's like, we know what He expects of us. How many, how many people are frustrated because they, they don't know the God, what He's communicated to them? But it, it stands to reason that if we have a Creator, which we do, that He would communicate to us. He would show us what He's like. He would show us what He wants from us. He would show us how to live and there is a God in heaven who's done that, who cares for you and I and is with us. There is a God in heaven. There's a God in heaven who showed what He's like through Jesus Christ. There's a God in heaven who, who came and dwelt with flesh. We read on in this passage that the, the magicians and the astrologers say that gods do not dwell with flesh, but our God, He came and dwelt amongst us in the form of Jesus Christ, the Son, who showed us everything that we would expect of our Creator to just speak and the storm stops, to, to control the elements, to walk on water, who could heal every sickness, who could bring the dead back to life, who could control even the animals. Cast your rod on that side and you'll catch the fish and the fish all came. Curse, he could control the, the plants, curse the fig tree and it, was cur it, it withered away immediately. There is a God in heaven who came and he dwelt amongst us and showed us what he's like, how loving and merciful and kind. Whatever your seemingly impossible challenge is today, there is a God in heaven. Verse 5 said, The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, My decision is that if you do not make known the dream to me, you should be cut in pieces and your home should be made like an ash heap or a, a dung hill. And it, it seems like the king Nebuchadnezzar had just lost patience with these wise men and these magicians. Look at verse 9 as well. It says, If you do not make known the dream to me, there is only one decree for you. For you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the time has changed. Therefore, tell the dream, and I shall know that you can give me the interpretation. No compromise from the king. 
they had to tell his dream. The king Nebuchadnezzar is losing patience with these, uh, these people. And he was putting unreasonable things upon them to do. Because he had lost trust, he had lost patience, he was troubled, so he was putting unreasonable things upon people. Is anybody here putting unreasonable things upon other people? Anybody listening? Are you putting any unreasonable things on people? Because there is a God in heaven who sees. There is a God in heaven who sees what, what we're doing. Don't forget that just as people have mis mistreat us and do unreasonable things towards us and put unreasonable things upon us, don't forget, haven't we done that as well to other people in our lives? There's a God in heaven who sees. Don't forget that you too, we too have mistreated people. And, and so Jesus told the story of the man who who forgave another man a huge debt. And then when that man was forgiven this huge debt, somebody who owed money to him, he wouldn't forgive him. And God saw, God sees. And as God has shown mercy to us and forgiven us every day and for many things, he wants us to show mercy and forgiveness to other people too. Not to put unreasonable things upon, upon people. Praise God. There is a God in heaven who, who sees. Let's, let's be like our God. A merciful God. Towards other people. As we read on in verse 12 to 13 it says... Uh, sorry, no, I'm, I've, got a, okay. I've skipped a bit there. Let's go back to verse 7 to 11. I want to go from there. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will give its interpretation. The king answered and said, I know for certain that you would gain time, because you see that my decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me, there is only one decree for you, for you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the time has changed. Therefore tell me the dream and I shall know that you can give me its interpretation. That's fair enough. If they can work out what the dream is without him telling them, surely they can interpret it. Then, then we read in 10, the Chaldeans answered the king and said, there is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore the king Lord or, or therefore no king, lord or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician, <laughs> astrologer or Chaldeans. It is a difficult thing that the king requests and there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is, is not with flesh. The Chaldeans have recognised something here. They've recognised that there, this is an impossibility to do unless there is a God in heaven who can help them to do this. Maybe somebody here or somebody listening later needs to recognize that there are things in your life, things in my life that we cannot do. That we need to confess, I cannot do this by myself. Yeah? I cannot do it. And, and I need the God in heaven to do it. The, the, the God who's, who, who the Chaldeans didn't know. The God who they said, gods do not come and dwell with flesh. Yet, the prophet Isaiah had, had, had said that, had prophesied of how God would... Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. As, is there anything in our lives today we need to recognize, just confess, I can't do it. There, but there is a God in heaven 
and by his might, by his spirit, not by might, not by my might, not by power, but by your spirit, O oh God. This can be done. It's not impossible. Let's read on verse 12. For this reason, the king was angry and very furious and gave the command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree went out and they began killing the wise men and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. Mm -hmm. Prophet Daniel's in danger. danger. Wanted, wanted man. Posters up everywhere. Uh, wanted Daniel. <clears throat> wanted Shadrach. Meshach, Abednego, wanted magicians, wanted. Well, I should take a drink of water, but there's one down here. <clears throat> think about it now, think about being in Daniel's shoes. And the magicians, the astrologers. The king is taking out his frustration, his anxiety, and he's, because they couldn't meet his unreasonable demands. Are you placing any unreasonable demands on anybody? Do you have any unreasonable expectations that you're putting on anybody you know? There is a God in heaven who one day as this scripture says in Ecclesiastes 12, 14, will bring everything into judgment. Ecclesiastes 12, 14 says, For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Stop and reflect. Realize that everything we do, that there will be a judgment. And Romans chapter 14, also in verse 10 says, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of who? Does that verse say? Christ. Yeah, Romans 14.10, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And then in verse 12 it says that everyone will give an account. Let's not put unreasonable demands or expectations on People we know, maybe family members, we might do that to sometimes. Or friends, or, or church brethren. There is a God who sees, and there is a God in heaven who brings every work, good or evil, into judgment. We need to remember that. Let's read on verse 14. Back in Daniel. Then with counsel and wisdom... Daniel answered Ariok, the captain of the king's guards, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. So Ariok was coming after Daniel as well, to kill him. But Daniel answered with, as it says there, counsel and wisdom. There is a God in heaven, brothers and sisters, who gives us wisdom to speak. Do you remember in the book of Luke, in Luke 21, and the disciples were told that do not premeditate beforehand what you're going to say. Because God will give you the words to speak. And I think of one, one wonderful example in the book of Acts, where the council the, of religious leaders, they had Peter and John before them, and they said... We forbid you to speak, to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just love it how God gave them the words. His, his promise in there in Luke 21 was, was seen to be, be true. And what did Peter and John say? Does anybody remember? Whether it is, whether it is right in the sight of God, you judge whether it is, it is right to obey Man more or God more? And, and they, they let them go. It was, a, it was a wonderful word that God had, of wisdom and counsel that God had, had given them. There is a God in heaven who grants us 
and gives us wisdom when, when we need it. But also, if, let's read on, verse 15. Daniel, he answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree from the king so urgent? Then Ariok made the decision known to Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. How was that working for the magicians and the astrologers, no. getting time? Not well. Wasn't working very well. There's a God in heaven who gave Daniel courage as well mm. to go before the king and to ask for time. Mm. It says in the Bible that the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. There is a God in heaven who will give us courage to preach the gospel, to face our Goliaths that, that come in our lives, to face the problems. There is a God in heaven who gave Daniel courage because our God is real Amen. and our God cares. Our God is mighty and he will fill us with courage and confidence, confidence. And our God in heaven, there is a God in heaven who is compassionate, who shows favor and shows grace to his people, Amen. to Daniel, his prophet. There is a God in heaven who will show us, give us courage and show us favor and, and grace. Because we know what our God has done in the gospel. I was sharing this week the good news. And I'd been reflecting upon how maybe I hadn't been sharing it as well as I might have. Just the, how good the good news is. And I decided to, to share it a little bit differently. I was, I was so focused on crucifixion and resurrection. The definition of the gospel that we see in 1 Corinthians 15. But I said, I shared my story as we've been talking about. Share your story. And I, I love the, the fact as a young person who loved life, I love the fact that the Christian message offered eternal life. And that, that's one I said to the person, you can live forever. And you can live forever with a wonderful God in a world with no more suffering, no more pain. You can. Why? Because of the, of the crucifixion of Christ who paid the price for our sins that we had committed against God and because he didn't stay dead but because he rose from the dead and that encouraged the person that I was speaking to we have a God who who is compassionate who saw the mess that we were in as humans we couldn't make up for all the wickedness we'd committed against God over centuries millennia but God made a way because he showed compassion he showed mercy and his son Jesus Christ showed God's love and was compassionate and merciful to us. There is a God in heaven who shows favor and grace that we didn't deserve any goodness or mercy from God. There is a wonderful God in heaven. Amen. Daniel, unlike the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the sorcerers, Daniel had also gained the respect of King Nebuchadnezzar. Go back just to chapter 1 and verse 19. Before this, this seemingly impossible challenge, then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none was found like Daniel, That's Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Those are the Azariah. Hebrew names for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king had interviewed all his wise wise men, magicians, etc., and Daniel, therefore, and Azariah, therefore they served before the king, because there was none found like them. And in all the matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his yeah. realm. There is a God in heaven who will bless his people with wisdom, with all kinds of characteristics that can actually bring us respect with men. There is a God in heaven who will build up the character of honesty in us, 
something that you might hear people of the world bemoan that there's who can I employ who, who, who's honest? Who can I employ who's trustworthy? Who can I employ who doesn't have a criminal record? Uh, who can I employ who, who doesn't, isn't taking drugs? Who can I employ who, who isn't getting drunk all the time and coming to work? There is a God in heaven who blesses us with, with characteristics that can bring us favor with men. I remember when I got my first... Um, full-time job. It was for uh, a position as a judge's associate at the Administrative Appeals Tribunal in Australia. In Australia. And I got 52% for administrative law, which is not a good start, going for a position at the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. But I said to the, <laughs> at the interview to the three judges, I said, even though I got 50, only got 52% <laughs> in administrative law, what would really motivate me in this job is justice. That would really motivate me in, in seeing that justice is done. And then I got a phone call, um, we want to give you the job because we liked your honesty <laughs> at the interview. There is a God in heaven who will fill us with characteristics that do have value in this world, in our employment, with our families and with our friends, if they can trust us. They find they're not, people around them are not trustworthy, not keeping their word. But there is a God in heaven who wants to bless us and blesses us with characteristics like Daniel was found ten times better in his friends than the magicians, the astrologers. Verse 17 to 19 says, Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Azariah, Azariah. and his companions. The decision was, you're going to die. Hmm. Unless you can get this dream and tell this king that this dream, solve the impossible challenge and interpret it. So he told them that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning the secret, so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision, so Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Amen. There is a God in heaven Amen. who we can go to and pray to, who will answer our prayers, who will show us mercy because he loves us. He's died for us. We've, we've, we've accepted his mercy. And there's a God in heaven who will hear us, who will be attentive to the prayers that are made from this temple. Amen. There is a God in heaven attentive to the prayers made in the temple of our bodies, in the temple of the church. Praise Him. Praise Verse 20 to 23, and that's how it ends. There is a God in heaven to be praised. Amen. Verse 20 says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever Amen. and ever, for wisdom and might are His, and He changes the times and the seasons. Yes. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and light dwells with Him. Amen. There is a God in heaven who is full of light and yes. goodness. I thank you and praise you, O oh God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you. Yes. For you have made known to us the king's Matt. demand. Hmm. There's a God in heaven to be praised. Amen. Blessed be our God. Blessed be our God. There's a God in heaven to praise whether or not he, he answers our cry. And we see that in the next chapter. Look at that in Daniel 3, 16 to 18. This is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They, want, they prayed to God that, that they would be delivered from the fire, that, that they wouldn't go in the fire. And then we see in verse 16 to 18 of Daniel chapter 3, they were thrown into the fire. But before that, they said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Yeah. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. 
But if not, if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. There is a God in heaven to praise and glorify whether he delivers us from the fire or not. Verse 21, there is a God in heaven who gives wisdom to whom? Of chapter 2. There's a God in heaven, it says there, he, he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. And I was thinking about that verse, is it just saying that God... Um, makes people wise by giving them wisdom? Or is it saying, perhaps in addition or only saying, is it saying that God only, if you're wise already, God will give you more wisdom? Think about the context. How, how Daniel was already a wise man. He was given by God. Because of his relationship with God. He had shown himself to the king Nebuchadnezzar to be very wise. So had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So is this verse saying uh, he's only wise because God has given him wisdom? That, that's yes. true. We're only wise because God has given us wisdom. Yes. But is it also saying God will not give wisdom to fools? Look at this verse in the New Testament. Mark 4, 24, 25 says, Then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you and to you who hear. To you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. There is a God in heaven who doesn't give wisdom to fools. But there is a God in heaven who will give more to the righteous. Who will give more wisdom to the wise. God does not give wisdom to fools. God shows favour to the righteous, doesn't he? Has he shown you favour? He's shown me favour. If you are not righteous, this can change today. And you can be amongst those who God will give more to those who have. You, this can change today. Anyone listening who, who, who comes to faith in Jesus Christ today, anybody who, who repents of their sins today and surrenders their life to, to God can be among the righteous today. Isn't it wonderful God's way that forgiveness can be fast when the heart is right? A fool can be turned to wise, a, a wise person, because it is wise to believe and repent of sins, and you're no longer a fool. Don't be a fool like the magicians, the astrologers, the Chardins, and the sorcerers. Be wise, be humble before God, and repent today. Even, even listening here, people of God today, if there's something in your life that's not squaring up with what God wants for you. Repent of that. Be wise. And God gives more wisdom to the wise. God is gracious to the humble and the repentant. So finally, verse 20 again. There is a God in heaven to be praised. Amen. says there, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. I don't know whether we need to write and ever. Forever is forever. But blessed, it's, it's emphasized, this praise, blessed be his name forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Amen. And he changes the seasons, times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. The theme song for the sermon today was, there is a God in heaven who we can call on. There is a God in heaven who is gracious. There is a God in heaven who cares for us. There is a God in heaven who will give us courage. 
There is a God in heaven who will give us wisdom and wise counsel. There is a God in heaven who will give us the words we need at the right time. There is a God in heaven who dwelt among men through his son Jesus Christ who is on our side. Is this God in heaven on your side? Amen. There is therefore our seemingly impossible challenges. God will help us to overcome these seemingly impossible challenges. There is a God in heaven. I want to encourage you this week that this will be your theme song for the week. There is a God in heaven. And I want to encourage you, this will be your theme song to the day you die. There is a God in heaven. Amen. There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, the expression go, if you're singing something, you're repeating it over and over. There is a God in heaven who saves, give us, we praise him, we honor him, who will deliver us, who will give us wisdom. There is a God, there is a God. And we give God thanks. There is a God in heaven. Praise the Lord. What I give God thanks for is words that he has shared with us today through David. And that this will be something that will continue to be in our mind. I'll be reminding us of who he is. That there is a God. Thank you, David. We're going to sing for closing. Oh, worship the King. Oh, glorious above. So we're going to stand those who are able to stand as we sing this song for closing. Thank you. Grant us deliverance. 
You are a God who reveals secrets. Amen. You are a God who protects. You are a God who delivers. You are a God who is our strength. You are a God who is our rock, Amen. our buckler. You are our high tower. You are our refuge. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your words today, reminding us that you are our God. And Father, we thank you that you come to make your abode in us, to your Son, Jesus Christ, and your Holy Spirit dwelling in us, Lord. Thank you for that. We ask of you, Lord, that whenever we feel as if there's anything that seems impossible, that we can call on you because you're a God where all things are possible with you. Father, we thank you that you can lift us up, Lord. You can give us the understanding, you can give us the wisdom so that we can honor you and praise you and bless you as Daniel did. He blesses you who is his God and you are our God today. Father, we thank you for that that you haven't changed, you're still the same God. The God of Daniel, Shadok, and ben Meshach, and Abednego, you are our God today, Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the assurance that we have in you. Help us, Lord, to go forth with the confidence, knowing that you are by our side. As your word says, you won't leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Heavenly Father, may you go before us, Lord, and lead the way. Keep our minds focused, Lord. Keep our minds steadfast yes, on you. Yes, Keep our minds, Lord, and the things that pertain to you, Lord. Yes, that it will be well with us. And even if it's not well with us, as we were reminded that even if you choose not to deliver, we will still trust you. We will still praise you because yeah. you deserve all our praise. Yeah. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. All right.